have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Three, two, one, zero. I'm Austin with Mars Props, and I'm here with Orion Lawyer, uh, who is a uh, doctor of computer science at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And they're here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you're here in Florida? So this is, uh, we prepared a mining robot for the NASA Robotic Mining Competition. And uh, that's uh, the contest is basically to build a robot, ideally autonomous, that will basically drive across a, like a, a moon-looking obstacle field, mine as much simulated moon dust as you can, drive it back and dump it into a, a storage area. You're scored based on the weight of your robot, the amount of bandwidth you use, how much material you can mine, uh, let's see, a bunch of other stuff. If, if the robot's fully autonomous, you get massive bonus points. So that's definitely what we're after. Cool. So we're actually in your hotel room here in, uh, here on the space coast of Florida, where they're going to have it at. The competition is at the Kennedy Space Center. Yeah. And basically, you've been here. How, you, you arrived here in Florida a couple of days ago, and you've been taking this out to different terrain and testing it and, and working on different things. Just looking at it here, I see it, you know, a couple of things I recognize. Like First thing I saw, you had the Anderson Power Poles. That's something I'm familiar with. Arduino Mega runs the whole thing. Yeah, we, we're using uh, BTS motor controllers instead of Sabertooth, but last year we were using Sabertooth motor controllers, so just exactly like uh, your R2. Here we have, uh, there's an onboard laptop. It's just uh, running Linux. We've got some control software that we built basically to, uh, uh, so, so we can, for example, SSH in. We can, you know, just uh, go ahead and command the robot to do, let's see, I think I'm armed, so hopefully, no, okay. So I can, like, uh, here I'm moving the mining head up and down. We can run the mining head back and forth. I could drive, except we took the tracks off, because uh, one of our things we noticed in our testing is that uh, it doesn't drive well on sand at the moment. We, we did most of our testing on snow, where it was working pretty well, but uh, different properties for sand. So the, the uh, I think we just need more track tension, so we just moved our axle holes up. And hopefully those uh, hopefully that's going to work for us. So we, now we need to figure out how to get our tracks back on with the new... <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's a lot more tension there, hopefully. So these guys come from a climate where it's so cold. The fact that they're getting out and building robots, just that alone is amazing. So looking at some of the more mechanical stuff, which is what I know a little bit more about, like I can see like some of the problem solving you did with the tracks. You said you used different materials and you ended up on this uh, polyester weave. We, we, we tried a bunch of different tracks. I mean, track material has always been a, a – it's hard to find a track that's really flexible, lightweight, uh, uh, extremely strong because so, a 100-pound robot is going to be like you know, pulling itself along on it for, for long term. A lot of people use like a reinforced PVC rubber. Uh, it, uh, the, in fact, there's kind of a standard part number that everybody uses. And the problem is with this stuff is it's, it's nearly eighth inch thick and it's extremely heavy. Wow. So we found – uh, we tried again a bunch of different materials we ended up with uh, it's a woven polyester landscaping fabric yeah. and you said they do score for weight so going Your lighter is, is so good and you said we, we can get the yeah the strength is there for these and another thing yeah. like this is a solution that i do is go down to the harb uh, to the uh, hardware store and buy aluminum angle and just make tons of stuff out of that Absolutely. so i see yeah. the tracks yeah. they cut aluminum angle here for traction and that's like, when I saw that, I knew I was in good company because that's <laughs> totally something I would have done. And then also you're using the 3D printed parts too. Yeah, so every uh, uh, every stud is uh, connected to a 3D printed. These are 3D printed here. 3D printed uh, drive sprocket. Yeah, every, uh, every stud has a little nut trap and a number 10 32 bolt. Our idlers are just PVC at the moment. We Actually, we were realizing those should have been 3D printed as well, but... And down here you have the tensioner for the track, which is spring-loaded. Yeah. I don't want to touch too much. No, let's get, go for it. I mean, it's it's all pretty pretty beefy stuff. I'm trying to see where you actually have the spring at, but that's spring-loaded. There's a, uh, there, it's actually wound inside right oh, there, man, and I just I popped it out. But uh, That's why I didn't want to yeah, touch it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's supposed oh, to go, go in there. And we actually probably ought to bend it back. So one problem is it's just a chunk of, like... Not quite coat hanger. I think it's actually old bed spring. <laughs> that was our uh, our motors and gearboxes are just straight off of a power wheels, like uh, like a kid's car. And and the trick being that they are those are indestructible. I mean, we have never killed one. And we've ran we ran our, our last set. Uh, they were like driving over a volcano. They 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 went to two different NASA competitions. And the gearboxes were so full of sand they're making this horrible grinding noise. But they kept turning right, which is what you always want. <laughs> They so just got to keep on trucking. Yeah. 
and and they're you know they're they're eleven bucks, so if you can just buy a stack of those things, and that's oh, wow. uh, that's definitely you're better off that way. So you go to like the surplus stores and go through the bins of like everything and look for finding surplus is good. Yeah, if if I can find a place where I can just order as many as I want, that's always better than surplus. I mean, the problem with surplus is you might find an awesome thing. We had some we found some old windshield washer motors that were perfect. That's that's what powered old mining head, but uh, we only had three. Yeah, and you know you kill one and you're like, uh, I just burned fifty percent of my spares. We're using and, uh, power uh, seat motors and yeah, window yeah, yeah. Uh, windshield yeah. wiper motors and yeah. all that because they have good torque. Yeah. And like obviously like that's not like something you plan to replace on your car a lot, so they build them pretty robust. Yeah. Trying to find DC motors, yeah, a lot of automotive parts are good. You can spend a lot on DC motors, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you call up, like, NPC Robotics, then you can get in uh, some heavy duty Linear actuators, so these are linear actuators from a, uh, uh, like, a solar setup, right? They would be uh, tracking solar panels across... So they're they're weather rated and they're they're really beefy and they're designed for you know low voltage DC operation. And so your your role in this is you're kind of like uh, the instructor for these guys, right? That's the theory. I, I should actually have more class work that I do there. I don't. Uh, I I'm, I'm I finally get to teach a uh, robotics and 3D printing course, but in uh, this fall. So I'm I'm definitely gonna bring a lot of this stuff in there. So, so um, without getting them on camera, you could tell me a little bit about who's on your team and what they do. Yeah, so so uh, uh, T- Tyler Pruce has sort of been the, the backbone of the team, the guy that's always going to be there, which is which is awesome. Electrical engineering major, but does we all do everything basically. I, I noticed always, like yeah. going through your team, like this is a very mechanical robot, and then you guys told me There's, you actually don't have a mechanical engineer on the team. Yeah, well, so so we, we have several good folks that uh, that we just have a hard time keeping them coming back. So okay. <laughs> They, they've, they've definitely helped. I mean, we had uh, Jason Pascvan and Dalton Newbro have definitely contributed. But you guys can put on uh, different hats to get the job done yeah, yourself. Yeah. Because I know it's like whenever you guys are talking about code, it seems like everybody knows exactly what they're talking about. And then mechanical stuff, it's like, well, we could drill a hole here maybe. You know, or <laughs> it's it's probably embarrassing actually. No, no, not if at all. We it's... got a real mechanical experienced mechanical engineer on the on the on the team. They would probably change a lot. So, um, so but. Like I said before, the competition is tomorrow. Yeah, like we're here in tomorrow. your in your hotel room. How does it feel? Like how are, are you nervous or? We're well. So th- this is our third year competing, and okay. uh, I mean we, we did. We, it was, the first year was kind of like disaster central because we had a bunch. You know we never competed. We didn't know what was going to go wrong. We found out right, and you know lots of stuff goes wrong. We figure out how to fix it. Second year we tried to be extremely conservative, so we had the same wheels, we had the same motors, we had the same exact mining it. It turns out, and uh, it was actually pretty comfortable. And we did we did quite well. We actually won the judges innovation award. Oh. Uh, so this being a third year, unfortunately now we got really ambitious and we switched to tracks, brand new tracks and. And, you know, hey, help you darn, they work great on snow, but they don't, uh, they don't work in, in dust as well as we want. So I think we're kind of back in this uh, mode of like, oh, no. <laughs> so I was trying to psychologically prep the team for like, you know, things go horribly wrong. We figured out lots of interesting stuff. We've developed lots of interesting technology. So for next year, we'll... <laughs> Always learning more. But, you know, we also got, we definitely got a shot. You know, there's usually, so 50 teams register, usually about 30 some show up because, you know, 10 of them could not really get the robots operational. We definitely are going to make it there. Yeah, well, I've seen robot. you taking this yeah. in and out of the hotel. We, we, I mean, we've test run it, you know, multiple times here. We, we you know, we test run it. We, we, we got a couple of days of good practice in it uh, back back home. So it. It's definitely there. I mean, we're we're ahead of where we could be. I think we're ahead of where we were uh, with our first year. So that's uh, that's definitely progress. And and like I say, so you know, thirty teams show up. Of those, maybe twenty will actually be able to successfully mine anything and get it back. Oh wow! And a lot of them, it's just a t- you know barely qualifying or. You so know, you see a lot of people like just kind of they left the building at that point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's frustrating because the there's so many things that are sort of. Uh, the, 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 there, were, there was a team that used uh, casters, caster wheels, just like off a, uh, uh, you know. I can't imagine that doing well in soil. Yeah, well, maybe or even lunar uh, lunar the rigolith is, analog so or something. So the problem is they didn't test it in soil, right? So then they're like, oh gosh, what do we do, right? I mean, and, and it's just like you look at the robot, and it's like it's just obvious that like, uh, aren't those just gonna dig in? And they're like, no, it worked great on the floor. And it's like, well, when's the last time right? you dug in on yeah. the floor, though? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So it uh, yeah so 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 there are teams that clearly hadn't done enough nearly enough testing in real uh, uh, environments. So we definitely I mean we're, we're trying to be really test heavy. We're pre- you know part of having this big computer science heritage in the team is that computer science is all about just keep trying it. You know. There's so no... <laughs> if you were doing like an aircraft, then obviously like a wind tunnel would be your testing ground. Yep. For this, you kind of need you just need a big plot of dirt. Yep. 
Um, because you, they, they, the people that run the competition, they don't, they haven't told you exactly what you're gonna, what it's gonna be. Yeah, and and it's you know the 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 official material you're mining in is is JPL BP one is a lunar regolith simulant. Okay. <laughs> and it's sort of it's available from NASA in like gram quantities, but uh, you can't really get. It so yeah, so stuff. you're not gonna be able to afford yeah. to build a huge test bed, <laughs> yeah. just uh, just for the competition, yeah. and then also. Not knowing what is going to be, it's kind of like uh, a, uh, a not a, uh, a tip of the hat to the fact that if you do build a rover that's going to another planet, you might not know exactly what it's going to encounter. It might be big boulders. Um, so they want you to yeah. be, they Ready. want you to to have something that might work yeah. in a multitude of situations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's very easy. There's a lot of robotic competitions that are extremely structured. I don't know if you've seen Micro Mouse. They build a, they have a maze. It's 32 by 32 grid cells. They specify the material of the walls, the height of the walls, the color of the floor. The you know everything is totally specified. So everybody knows so going in what they're going to have to face. You start at grid cell what you call zero zero, and now you do, 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 and you know you're counting grid cells, right? And you know exactly how big the maze is, and it's a really a structured environment. And this is a lot more unstructured. I mean, you're essentially supposed to drop the robot off. There's one marker, kind of like the landing craft, where you're supposed to dump your material, and that's all you can control essentially. Wow. And everything else is just dirt and there's going to be craters and there's going to be big rocks and there's uh, I can't wait to yeah. see it uh, so you you tested it though in because you're because obviously you're from Alaska so you tested it on snow we tested on snow because that was our, our you know most accessible and then uh, you said you've done grass and like sand we've done grass and we did sand this afternoon before yeah. you go home you'll I mean now that you're here <laughs> near Cocoa Beach you can actually do it yeah. on the beach but yeah. you might run into uh, some problems with some oxidation if you do the salt water. It's the salt water we're worried about, yeah. It, luckily, I mean, it's just got to stay together for a week, so. Well, I, I like some of the problem solving. This is my favorite. This is a fast take food, box, yeah. yeah. Takeout box. <laughs> which is like totally, The lightest weight. Well, if you're going for weight, you can't beat it. And like, yeah. obviously like wood, that's the original composite material. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, composites are known for being strong and lightweight. Uh, 3D printing. I really like wood as far as just like, you know, we need a disc this big and, you know, whole saw, you can make one in two minutes. Everyone yeah. sells it. Yeah, you can find it anywhere. It grows out of the, it, it doesn't grow on trees, they say, but it does in this case. 3D printing, you have to buy the expensive material and then you have to wait for the printer to print these things. I mean, this is like about a four hour print for that, uh, that sprocket. And, and you can't just leave it alone tree. because yeah. like when you're 3D printing, sometimes well, things crop up and you need to be there. Like if the extruder gets clogged. I or usually leave it alone. Mine's finally gotten it reliable after a couple of I'd be years. Careful. There was one guy in the R2 builders who uh, had his catch on fire when he wasn't there. So. I, I definitely, I have it. I built a fireproof box. Oh, around good. It, so, yeah. Yeah. I'm relieved. <laughs> but but still, you could come back and find that your print was yeah. completely messed up. Oh, because yeah, it, that certainly happens. Yeah. yeah, you come back and you've got half a print and then a ball of spaghetti on the, uh, yeah. the extruder. So. Uh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> well, I'm super impressed. I can't wait. I wish you guys like a ton of luck on this. And I'm gonna come out. Think, yeah. I'm gonna come out. Hopefully, it's not, it doesn't come down to luck. There's some real engineering here. So yeah. I'm gonna come in and uh, get some footage of it working. Yeah. I hear uh, you guys are gonna put a GoPro on it. That's it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm frequently at the visitor complex as it is. Yeah. I keep my annual pass very current, yeah. so I can go whenever I like. Yeah. So we'll all see you guys there. And uh, thanks for showing. And uh, stay tuned for more cool things on Mars props. Yeah. And again, this was a. Uh, this is Orion uh, Lawler. Lawler. Yeah. Lawler. Lawler. Who uh, not not only does he build robots, but has the coolest first name ever. So, <laughs> so we'll give him props for that. Thank you very much. Yeah.